we've already talked about, you know, the special features. And I think anybody who kind of knows about guitars would already be interested in your guitars. But why would, you know, it be a good idea for someone to get one of your guitars? Yeah. Um, well, I think they're great guitars. So, <laughs> you know, everyone should have one. But what I find typically with my clients is that they're coming to, to me and it, this this isn't unique to me, but coming to an individual luthier um, because they can't find what what they want off the shelf in their music store. And so I know for my clients, typically there's one or more options that they're having a hard time getting. Mm -hmm. um, either the options are just not available or um, the options are extremely expensive having to go through the custom shop at one of these factories. Mm -hmm. And so the most common things I find people are looking for is tone woods, um, either a certain wood or a certain combination of woods. Um, and the other one is probably uh, scale length and neck measurements. Mm -hmm. And so what I get is a lot of people who have been playing guitar for a long time and they probably have a favorite guitar um, which may not be a very expensive guitar, but it's, it's what they're used to. And so uh, the process obviously varies if, if the person can come in person to my shop. Um, but often I'll, I'll be asked to duplicate, uh, the neck measurements, um, to closely match what they're currently used to. So if they're used to a certain scale length, uh, with a specific nut width or saddle spacing, um, they will get me to um, to put that on their new guitar. And again, for someone like myself, it's not that big of a deal to vary those options. I don't charge any extra um, if a customer needs a wider nut or a wider saddle spacing um, because I, I'm building each guitar individually. I can I can make those parts individually. Uh, and it also means that um, those options are, are available across my whole line of guitars. So no matter what size the guitar is, um, I can work those features in. Whereas, again, with a factory build instrument, you, you either have just one option or maybe two options on a given model as far as scale length and those sorts of things. So, um, yeah, and then there are some some other features whether it's uh, like a beveled armrest or something like that uh, to make the guitar more comfortable um, and then the odd person has you know very specific ideas maybe about a headstock shape or something like that and i i do have uh three or four different headstock shapes that get used on different models um but sometimes they want to swap one and kind of use mm -hmm. use a different one than what i would traditionally do and and uh, I'm generally open to all those kind of things within reason. Um, I've had, I've been approached to do some very weird things and I, I typically turn those down because mm -hmm. I, I don't believe they, they would produce a successful instrument. But um, yeah, within reason, I'll, I'll consider a lot of, a lot of different options. And inlay is another one. Um, I know I mentioned I don't typically do a lot of inlay, but uh, for a lot of people, it's it's maybe just getting something special at the 12th fret on the instrument, or um, maybe the person wants their initials inlaid somewhere on the instrument or something like that, uh, or, or if there's a specific symbol or something that has significance to them, um, just actually uh, that'll be showing up on one of the the custom jobs I'm doing for, for Paramount right now, there's a, just a little symbol on the headstock of one of the client's guitars there. Um, again, I'm, I'm happy to, to try and accommodate those things and uh, just some of the small touches that, that I can offer that uh, are either hard to get or just not available on a, a factory built instrument. So if someone is interested in getting a custom guitar for you, what's the best way of starting that process? Yeah, well, it it starts with a conversation. And so I'd encourage anyone who's who's thinking about a custom guitar, has questions, um, just to get in touch and start that conversation. And 
you can get in touch with me uh, directly. All my contact info is on my website, um, houseguitars.com. If you're in the US, uh, you can also talk to Ken at Paramount and his website is paramountguitars.com. And, and he can also walk you through uh, the process I'm gonna describe. But you know, typically if someone comes to me, I find there's, there's kind of two different kinds of people. Some people come with a very specific idea of what they want and so they may already know the woods and the shape and 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 all that sort of thing um, other people just know that they want a custom guitar um, and so if if they don't have something specific in mind i usually start with finding out what kind of music does the person play um, you know are they strictly a a strummer and flat picker are they playing bluegrass uh, where they need a you know a very loud instrument mm -hmm. Uh, are they just playing in their living room for themselves and, and doing fingerstyle stuff, you know, in which case they don't need all that volume and that sort of thing. So once I know kind of what, what they intend to use the guitar for, uh, that will kind of point to certain guitar shapes probably as being a good option um, for that, that style of music. Um, and the other thing is uh, the size of the guitar the size of uh, the client who's ordering it. I like the height, for example. Um, a person who is uh, shorter is going to have a hard time with a very large guitar. Um, a person who is very tall may find a small guitar uncomfortable to play because, because it sits too low on their lap. And so there's things like that that sometimes, you know, people haven't thought through. Um, you know, if if you think you want a dreadnought guitar, but you already have shoulder problems, um, then a dreadnought guitar will aggravate your shoulder problems. So there's there's little things like that. I try and walk the client through, so they understand kind of the the advantages and disadvantages to the options that they might be considering. So once uh, we settle on a shape, then usually the next thing that's decided is is the tone woods, um, and again. If they want a loud guitar that's going to project, maybe something in the rosewood family with a, a spruce top. Uh, if they're more into finger style, I want a warmer sounding guitar, you know, a cedar top instrument uh, or Engelman spruce, something like that might be ideal for them. And once you kind of get through that stage, then, then it's the little details like the scale length, uh, string space things, string gauge, um, hardware, and, and then finally, kind of the decorative appointments, the, the binding, the purfling, the rosette, uh, things that don't actually contribute to the sound, but, but will still contribute to the look that the client may have in mind. So it, it can be a fairly involved process. Um, it usually involves a lot of back and forth uh, through emails or, or phone calls. And if I'm working with a client uh, designing a build, you know, I can generally provide pictures of instruments I built in the past so that they can see examples of what I've done and, and maybe the different features that, that they haven't seen before. So each dealing with each client is different. I've built, um, I build for local clients that live right here in town and I've built for people in, Europe and Australia, where the only communication we've had has been through email. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yet we've still been able to successfully design and build the, the guitar that the client's looking for. So um, it's, it's kind of a fun process uh, too for the, for the client because most aspects of the guitar can be customized and, and tweaked and uh, it, is, it is really fun to kind of pick out all those different pieces and, and put together your dream guitar. And uh, that's definitely one of the, the fun aspects I find of this job is that um, for me, pretty much everything I build is different. Um, rarely do I build two instruments that are exactly the same. And uh, it's, it's a challenge, but it's, it's fun to try and, you know, come up with the, the best combination that'll meet uh, each individual client's needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know with, with my guitar, 
we, you know, we were emailing back and forth and I was also working with Ken to make sure, you know, I understood everything and I got everything yeah. I wanted. So if anybody's interested in getting your guitars, there's help <laughs> from you or you can go through Ken. And that really helped me because there were certain aspects I didn't even know about. And I'm just in love with my guitar and it's like perfect for me. And so I'm so happy with how that process went and how easy it was and I understood everything and I got exactly what I wanted yeah no that's I and I always enjoy hearing that um from clients a lot of my clients are nice to post little videos and and send me messages after the fact and and even years down the road um hearing that they they still have the guitars and and love them and um I'm really happy especially with how your guitar turned out and the fact that that you you do like it so much and um, just give a real plug for your playing and your your YouTube uh, channel that you have on the go there where um, whether people find it through your website or my site or Paramount's site um, it's a uh, I'd encourage everyone to, to check out Liz's videos because you do have uh, some of the best recorded and produced uh, videos online I think of of my instruments it's so I'm really grateful that there are people like yourself that and uh and ken's help there that can can do a really good job with it so um yeah certainly encourage everyone to to check those videos out well let's end with our final question so okay what do you predict the future might bring for guitar building oh well that's a big question it's a big question you know and i it's, it's in some respects maybe it's hard to say but at the same time um guitar building uh luthery has really taken off i've noticed in the past few years and um when i started building 18 years ago i was kind of unusual in that i picked it as a first career so it was what i did straight out of high school i didn't go th through uh, college or university for anything else um, but i went straight into it and so i was kind of I was the odd one out at that time because most of the other builders I'd known, not all of them, but most had been picked it as a second or third career um, or a retirement business. And I would often go to guitar shows and that's what I would find is that a lot of people uh, were there um, kind of as, as a retirement business with their guitars. And, and there was just a couple guys or girls like myself who were, I want, I, I was going to say brave enough, but maybe crazy enough was uh, the right, right word to dive into it at a high school. But since I got into building, um, there's a lot more opportunities now for instruction in guitar making, a lot more schools, um, a, a lot more online resources. And so we're just seeing an explosion right now of uh, young people getting into the, uh, the guitar making world as a first career. And it's creating certain challenges and, and some unique things that we haven't seen in the market before. Um, what it means is that there's more choice right now than ever before when it comes to picking a, a luthier to work with. Um, there's established guys that have been you know, in the market for, for 30, 40 years and you're also seeing these these new businesses pop up where they've only been around for a year or two and then there's people like myself that are somewhere in between and so it, it can be a little overwhelming to to decide who who you should go with but um the things that i'm noticing is that the a lot of these young people are coming out with far more training initially than i ever had uh, from the training that i took at the time and so the quality of the instruments that's being produced is um, extremely high. And I've heard some people describe us as being kind of in a golden age of guitar making, um, where we have some of these great masters that are, you know, now 40, 50 years into their careers, um, combined with these uh, newer builders who are really pushing the envelope. Um, with their designs and, and what they're doing and, and also the you know, the, the easy availability of technology uh, today, like CNC machines and stuff like that, that are now affordable enough that a lot of individual builders can have these things in the shop. It, it means the, 
the quality of the guitars is is continuing to rise and it also means the competition among builders is is very fierce as far as you know we're we're all more or less we're all friends um in the guitar making community and and that's one thing i love is that information gets shared very freely at least in the steel string world not so much in the classical world but it does mean that um there's a lot of competition for the for the clients that are out there so um as a builder it's a very challenging time to be in the market and in the industry um from the client standpoint though you've got more to choose from now and i I think that's going to continue is just more and more options um, as far as uh, who is available to build and the types of gu guitars that are being produced so that you no longer just have to go and get a Martin or get a Taylor. Um, but what a lot of people may not know is that, you know, for the same, same price as what you'd go spend on a, a high end factory guitar, you can probably come to someone like myself and get a, a guitar that's going to have higher quality materials, um, better craftsmanship and a warranty that's, that's equally good, um, in the same price range. So, you know, that's, that's a lot of what, um, I work to do is just to make people aware that there are people like myself out there offering custom guitars and, uh, just, encourage everyone out there if if you haven't considered a, a custom built instrument um now's a, a great time to do it and uh i look forward hopefully to uh working with some of the, the folks that are watching this video in the years to come i will thank you for joining me today and doing this interview um thank you to anybody who is watching and if you are interested in learning more about Josh's guitars, you can head to his website, houseguitars.com, or you can go to paramountguitars.com. And if you want to hear my instrument played, you can search Liz Dio on YouTube, or you can go to lizdio.com.